Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Matt and this is Mr. Canucks Grow. I'm going to be showcasing the 5x5 Grow 10 in today's video and the only focus is going to be some crucial must use tips that you as a farmer can use to achieve bigger buds and yields. I will be releasing a full start to finish video on this 5x5 Grow come harvest time that's going to cover everything from start to finish so stay tuned for that. If you do want to see a video similar to that, I just released one last week that was a full clone to harvest video of the 8x2 closet grow which did cover every stage of the grow cycle from clone veg and flower including the harvest and curing stages you can just click the top right corner or use the video link that I have down below in the description if you want to check that out A lot of new growers get hung up on the brand of equipment being the big factor that makes a difference and don't get me wrong, of course certain lights are more optimal for maximizing yields but that only comes after the grower who is using those high end products is having a great grow and he is putting himself in the position to have the best yields of which he can now maximize with an efficient grow light. If you're not a great gardener you will not be maximizing anything. Doesn't really matter what kind of light you have. So instead of talking about products that give you big yields, let's talk about what the gardener has to do to set himself up for big buds and big harvests. So tip one, you need to make sure your plants stay happy and healthy to even consider growing stacked healthy flowers that just keep getting bigger. Having a very healthy veg cycle and keeping the plants free of pests and disease is important to making sure the plants performs well during the flowering stage. The more issues you run into, the more times you're going to be setting back the production of the flowers. So some things to stay on top of during the flowering stage would be air circulation. Healthy and hardy plants really do love and rely on that fresh air using an exhaust fan to exchange the air in the grow and using fans to push and circulate the air throughout the canopy as much as possible is really a big factor in keeping those plants happy. Having the proper equipment that allows the grower to actually gain control over the environment is absolutely imperative and I really encourage beginner growers to look at buying these types of equipment before going out and buying their very first high-end LED commercial grow light. You can do just fine with beginner lights. You don't need the very best right off the start especially if you're not sure what you're doing and you don't even have all the equipment in place to begin with. Now for farmers to grow big flowers they need to maintain an optimal temperature which for flowering is in the high 70s and you also need to avoid excess humidity because during this stage pests and disease just thrive off that type of environment and flower production just doesn't. So when I start the flowering stage I always like to have around a 50% relative humidity in the flower room and come mid to end flower I like to have an average of 40 percent RH. This is why having a dehumidifier or humidifier along with an AC unit is important to achieving big flowers. So moving on to tip two and that is maintaining the proper pH levels. Now the pH zone controls what nutrients the plant will uptake and consume and if you're not using the proper pH levels then your plant will not be able to absorb the food and you'll not be maximizing the plant's potential. So make sure you have the correct pH levels for the type of growing medium and nutrients that you use and of course understand that bottled nutrient growers need to use a different pH as organic growers so make sure you do your homework. I'm using cocoa with organic dry amendments and my optimal pH range is around 6.5 to 6.8. Now this is because I'm using microbials in the medium which is doing all the heavy lifting. They're breaking down all the food for the roots to intake and of course they really hate a low pH zone which is a very high acidity. So just make sure you understand the optimal pH ranges you need to be in for the growing style that you're using. Now moving on to tip three is just nutrients. Making sure your plant is receiving the proper amount of food and is not being left hung out to starve is important in the continuation of the flower production. You only want your plants to show hunger at the very end of the flower stage during the flushing part. Doesn't matter what kind of nutrients or brand you use, just make sure your plant is fed properly. There's many effective nutrient lines in today's cannabis growing industry that you can use.
Now for tip four, of course, is the light source, but we're not talking brands. Making sure you just have effective lighting for the grow space being used is important. Find your favorite grow light that fits your budget and make sure it's enough power to effectively cover your grow area. The generic equation for equipping lights for your grow room is 35 watts to 50 watts per square foot used. Now finally, once you do become a grow master, I then recommend looking at all the top end LEDs because those will increase your yields come harvest time. But once again, only if you know what you're doing. Tip 5. Cover your grow area with bud sites, dude. Training your plants to increase cola sites so your grow space is effectively covered wall to wall is the easiest way to increase your yields. Now depending on the style of your grow you're doing, you may want to consider using topping, super cropping, and low stress training techniques to help bush out your plants to fill out the grow space prior to flipping the flower. That combined with the next tip which is genetics. Yes, genetics. Know your genetic strain and use proper phenos of those strains that are prone to growing big and stacking flowers. The fact is some strains just grow bigger and produce larger yields than others, so you need to go on the hunt and find your favorite strain that produces the biggest yield for yourself. This is my granddaddy purple pheno I have, and this plant is just as vigorous as they come. This pheno of the granddaddy purple loves to veg into big plants, and during the flowering stage, it develops stack colas instead of golf size buds like this chocolate and OG strain in the 5x5. So know your genetics and understand it just takes time to find the proper phenols of a strain that are the most optimal for stacking large flowers and getting big yields. There's nothing about growing cannabis that is fast and that includes finding the strains to grow. Now the very last and final tip is going to be light penetration. Now using defoliation techniques during early to mid flower greatly increases the light penetration into the canopy and this aids into the stacking production of the budding flower. Hours. This GDP is a great example of a great genetic while using defoliation to increase penetration to extend this cola size. It's important to know how and when to use defoliations. Late veg and early flower is when I like to give the plants their first round of pruning and then I wait a few weeks to do it again no later than week 5 of flower. After that I like to let the plants focus on fattening up without any random stresses. So I really hope you found these simple tips to obtaining big flowers useful and enjoyed this video. If you did, I just really appreciate you hitting that like button and dropping a comment or question down below. I do go through all the comments and I do my very best to reply to every single question. Thank you so much to all the Patreon supporters. I will be releasing new content on my Patreon for those who want to support me as a creator and gain access to more content. Really do appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the comment section.